so that you've got something to to reflect back on to get ready for the test. What I did is I actually went down this list that I've got here. This is a nice little list, right? Uh, not there. Uh, here, in this one here, it's starting at right here where it's service quality, starting there. I went down through that and I looked at all that and I thought, well, what are the questions that I could write about all these things? And I limited the questions to these things. And so when I say I limited to it, these are the topics on which the quiz could be. And I ended up with uh, something like about 40 questions, 45 questions. And then what I did is then I uh, went into uh, um, to the quiz feature in, um, in, uh, in D2L. I'm going to stop being a student here. And um, in the quiz feature, I created a bunch of, uh, I put those questions into a library. And you can't see the library because it's all hidden for you now, but I will open it up before the test. And uh, in that library, I put these um, these 40 something questions and then I made a quiz and how the quiz works is it's gonna, there, oh, this, there's two sections for the test. One's questions that are four marks each and then there's a few of them. And then there's a lot more questions which are two marks each. And so what the uh, software does is it is going to randomly take from the all the questions that are four marks each, it's gonna take three of them, which is just a sample of them because there's a lot more than three. It's gonna take three of them for each student and it's gonna give those, uh, and then it's gonna take nine questions from the, um, from the two, two marks each and it's gonna create a quiz for you and it will randomize the order in which those questions appear for you. Uh, and so the idea being that every student will have a slightly different uh, test, even if you all had the same questions, which you won't, because that's not, it's because there's like 40 questions and you get nine of them, right? Or, or 12 of them. So each of you is gonna get a different 12, um, but uh, they'll be in different order as well. Um, now, the reason for that is I'm trying to let you have a situation where you don't have to come into the college and, and take the test. And uh, that's, uh, it's not just all for your benefit, that's also for my convenience, because to be quite honest, I can't find people to, uh, to do the, um, uh, do the uh, invigilation with me, um, because we've lost half of our teachers here because of COVID. Uh, when I say lost, I don't mean it in that fatalistic way that uh, they, they will be gone. Uh, what I mean is they're stuck at home uh, doing quarantine because they because um, one of our staff members uh, tested positive for COVID and that staff member was in a tight meeting with a bunch of people um, and uh, they all have to self-isolate. Uh, so that does mean, yes, uh, Hamza, you can do the test from home or you can come to the college if you like, but I'm not gonna make you come to the college. Um, so that's how that's working. Uh, you don't have to come to the college to do the test. And uh, I can see does here now. So I don't think I've marked her present. Maybe there's somebody else there that's arrived that I haven't marked present. Um, so yeah, the test will generate like that. Now, when you, do the, when you start the test, uh, you're probably gonna note that it seems like it's taking forever to start. You're gonna go click and start the test and then wait, wait, wait. Well, why am I waiting? Uh, why you'll be waiting is because uh, every, for, as the student joins the test, the server, that's the D2L server, is going to generate your own special test for you, which is randomized. And so uh, that takes time. And so we got a class of like um, 20 students that may take a minute or two for everybody's test to be generated. So you each get a little different test and I'm doing that uh, with the help of uh, the D2L software uh, with the view being that um, we have as, as little bit, as, as, as small amount of sharing of answers as possible. And uh, I hope that you will um, you'll embrace that particular spirit of things and not share each other's stuff. I mean, uh, we actually here at the college, there's a, there's a lot of teachers here and some other people that strongly sort of arguing that we should have all of our tests here at the college. And the reason being because uh, 
there's a strong suspicion that students will always share their answers. And so um, as long as that suspicion is there, there's going to be people arguing that we should have all our tests on uh, on this campus where we can see the students. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, th that's in the background. Um, I, the, the problem being with that is that uh, if we were in a non-COVID world, that wouldn't really matter because we just bring you all in. But the problem is we have actually have a big class, more than 20 people, which means I can't, uh, and the problem with that is I can't bring all of you into a single classroom because we're not allowed to have more than 20 people in a classroom. So that means I have to come up with all kinds of other alternatives, which are, are somewhat inconvenient. And so that is why we're going to try and do it online. Now, if the, if the assessment were more than 20% of the course, thank God it's not, uh, then we would have to do it on campus. And so you'll find that when we have a final exam, which we are going to have, that will have to be um, sitting in a classroom, but because it's a final exam, I, uh, the college will have to provide me with other teachers to help you, to help watch you while you do your test. So um, that was a bit rambly. I hope that makes sense. So uh, maybe a little bit more about what you're going to do in the test. As I said, you know that you have an extra day of no classes. Don't come to class tomorrow. Uh, there may be people at the college, but there won't be any classes. Um, because we have um, uh, the sports day. Um, the uh, if you look at these t now, I wouldn't say take this thing here and you know uh, print out the paper and just bring that to the test because it's open book test. You can you could do that, but you know why? Uh, what I would do is I uh, what you should do is not try and memorize these things, but you should try to make sure that you understand it. So and understand it in the context of ITSM. So for example, I just put a note there, de jure versus de facto. What the heck is that? All right, well, some of you might know Latin. And so you might know that de jure means by law. And you might know that de facto means by fact. And so you'd say, well, OK, that's nice. So you could be talking about, in some places, you could be talking about relationships between people. So I mean, you could have a very, very good friend who you share a property with. You could do that by law, or you, whereas you uh, develop, you wrote a contract, or you could do it by fact, which is just the, the, you both put a house on the same piece of land without a contract. That would be de facto, whereas de jure would be that there that you wrote a contract and you uh, you lodged that with the appropriate um, uh, legal entities, and so it was recognized. Now, obviously, de facto works nicely in some situations. Could could be a problem, right? Say one of those two friends leaves the country or something bad happens to them. And the other one goes and says, well, this is my property. And turns out that one of the friends has got a brother who says, oh, well, guess what? That's actually my property. Look here, I got this, this piece of paper from you know 200 years ago that says this belongs to our family. And then you say, well, de facto was that uh, my friend said I could build a house here. You know, too bad. Uh, so, you know, so there, there's a good example of, I hope, I hope you think it's a good example. It's my example. You decide if it's good or not. But um, that's an example of de jure de versus de facto. Now, how does that relate to um, to uh, ITSM? Well, it has to relate to the the argument where that arises is between standards and um, frameworks. So frameworks are de facto. They're based on the fact of the uh, of the situation. And you know, it's, we like to use ITILs framework or we we like to use MOF framework and uh, the facts on the ground are that these processes from ITIL are are implemented here at our at our workplace and we have somebody who's uh, ITIL uh, um, certified and so those are the facts on the ground uh, as opposed to de jure uh, which it would be standard based which it would be okay at our workplace uh, we implement ISO 20,000 and our workplace is ISO 20000 certified. And so what that means is that, uh, that uh, we have a certificate, which we have on the wall, which says that we're ISO 20000 certified. And uh, in order to become ISO 20000 certified, we had to do a lot of things, which are spelled out in kind of like a regulation. Uh, so uh, 
the point that I'm trying to make there is I wasn't trying to give you a lesson about de jure and de facto because we already talked about this in a pre in a lesson. But the point that I was making is that the notes that I've made here for you to look at to help you study for the test are not complete. They're not comprehensive. They're not everything that you need to know for the test. But what they what they are is points from which you can go back into the notes and find and understand. So in other words, the test should be testing your understanding, not your memorizing of these words. Does that make sense? Um, also bring to bring with you to the test and don't be afraid of this, but bring with you to the test your common sense. All right, so, uh, you know, uh, if you, you know, some of these things, um, you know, Though we've recorded some kind of specific thing somewhere in our notes or somewhere in a textbook or somewhere in some ISO documentation, uh, there there are things that you might just um, you j might just know, um, and uh, you know don't be afraid to write those down. Um, you might think that you know and not know too, so that could be a problem. But uh, it's always good to check your references. Um, Anyway, so that's what I th I'm thinking about the test. The test I did write from these notes. Uh, it is that you have to, uh, I'm sorry, it is going to be hard, as you said. Oh, uh, here's another example, the seven R's of change. That doesn't help you very much, does it? Actually, there's a video uh, there about change management, and there's a slide in that video, which is just about, oh, there's this, actually, there's a slide in your notes which is one page in your notes, which just says, what are the seven R's of change? So, um, yeah, you, that looks like that might be coming up as a question. RFC should know a little bit about what are the processes involved in a request for change, you know, and about authorization, you know, who, who uh, initiates an RFC, who authorizes an RFC, that type of thing. All right, so um, the point that I'm making there is I hope that you've got that don't just look at these words that I put there and memorize that and think that you're going to do okay in the test. You might get some things right. Now, here's another example, change management, the cycle. So there's a cycle for change management that has many phases or steps in it, two of which, one starts uh, are the request for change and lastly, the review. But I skipped a bunch of other phases. And so you need to find that in the notes and sort of be ready for that because it probably will show up as a question. I'm going to 